welcome to Lay Studio Art Classes with Sass. My name is Elizabeth and I'm your acrylic instructor. Thank you for joining me today. This is a quick class. We will be doing a nocturnal landscape. It will be beautiful and dramatic. You don't have to have any experience to paint this composition, but you do need a few basic supplies. This is the paint palette we'll be working with. Just four colors, black, white, deep blue, and light blue. You will also need four paint brushes, a medium to large filbert, a smaller filbert, a medium sized round brush, and a small round brush. You will also need a eight by 10 canvas or canvas panel. An easel is optional, but you do have to have a cup for paint water and a painter's rag, which could either be a recycled dishcloth or old t-shirt. So now that we have all our supplies worked out, I will begin by telling you quickly what we'll be doing. We are going to create working in layers with no pre-drawing. It will be partially silhouette style and we will have a beautiful night sky. So easy to do, even if you've never painted before, you can absolutely create this composition. I will be changing the camera view to bring this much closer to the canvas so you can see all of the small details that I'll be creating today. It is a quick class, it is easy, and it is fun. Thank you so much for joining me. I look forward to painting with you. All right, let's go ahead and get started on this wonderful painting. I have opted to do this more on a portrait style rather than landscape because it's a smaller canvas and we want to go for the height. So let's make sure you have your canvas positioned like so. And we will begin by picking up the round paintbrush. I want to begin by, although it seems odd to start, I want to begin starting with a little bit of white where I want the moon to go. So I'm going to aim for about the not, it doesn't have to be completely centered, but I want to aim for somewhere near the middle and begin of the sky area right about here. Fairly up high, okay? Not so high that we lose the detail later, but I want to go ahead and put a nice circle on here. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. Okay, get that in there with that round brush. All right, like so, very simple. I know you can't see it there, but it is there and you'll begin that way. Then I want you to take your larger filbert brush and we're going to add just a tiny bit of water to it. And we're going to start by painting a little bit of light blue kind of coming out around the moon. Give it a little bright glow around there, okay? Just about like so. Holding it on its side, really far down. Normally I would say hold it way back on the wooden part of the handle, but for this I want the extra control and I don't want too much movement through the brush itself. So I have given it a grip pretty low toward the brush. Not usually the proper way of doing it, but for this I recommend it because you'll get extra control. Okay, now holding my brush back where I normally do and I'm letting this kind of fade out a little bit and I can come back with a the round brush one more time this is the medium round brush again and just kind of touch up that line around the moon so and I can work that one more time to make sure that circle is the way I like it it's a nice full moon almost perfectionist here taking a little extra time just to make sure I get that moon shape the way I want it step back and make sure that's about right that looks good so now I'm gonna go ahead and go back to that filbert because this is a quick class and we do want to work quickly I'm showing you 
basic techniques you can do that are really easy to work through a canvas quickly, get a cute composition, something really pretty and sweet that you'll be happy with. You could either keep or give as a gift. This is something fun. You could do this with your family. I really recommend you have some fun with this. It's just four basic colors and you can really have some fun. Now I'm doing a streaky looking circle, big open circle around this, to which I'm going to begin changing it up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of white to the tip of my dirty paintbrush and I'm going to lighten up some of the blue right here close to the moon. And I'm working in kind of a, a circular swirly motion like this all the way around here. If I need to slightly loosen that paint up so it blends pretty, I will just use a damp paintbrush and go back and smooth the paint a little more so it looks really nice. We want a nice moon glow here. Blue moon. That's a nice blue moon glow. Look at that. All right, now I'm going to also pick up some deep blue on the tip of this filbert brush. And again, you can see I'm kind of holding it in more of a, a long angle rather than the wide angle. I'm holding it up on its tip. And I'm sketching around, again, in a similar circular fashion, and then kind of going around and allowing some of this to blend into the wet paint. Swirly, 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 just like this. Then I'll, with a dirty paintbrush, I'm going to pick up light blue. And I'm gonna go back one more time. Swirly, swirly, right on top of some of that darker blue. We're gonna get a really dramatic looking moon glow. Isn't that pretty? Add a little bit more light blue right here where I feel like it needs to be slightly lighter. You can always go back and do that. And I'll clean my paintbrush and again, work that blend back slightly. Clean it up a little bit. Clean, damp paintbrush is your friend. It will act like an eraser for you and a really great blending tool. Going around that whole circle again with that damp paintbrush. And look how gorgeous that swirl is. Wow, I love it. Okay, so I'm also going to go back now. Same, I don't need to be washing my paintbrush. I'm picking up deep blue one more time. And I'm, I am still painting in a circular method just because I like the way that's feeling. Clean my brush one more time, blend it one more time the way I might like that. Streaky, streaky, have some fun. Do the blending immediately. Acrylic paint dries so quickly and you don't want to get stuck with unblended swirls here. Bringing that further out, a little bit of a drippy brush. That happens sometimes, water rolls off the handle. Just make sure you have your rag nearby to help with that. So now I'm going to be a little bit more precise about where I'm putting the paint. This is the deep blue still, as you can see. And I'm going to bring that around here. Work it, work it, work it, my lovelies. Now, if you do have a stretch canvas, you need to paint the sides of your canvas around the edge, the sides. I'm working on a canvas panel, which is flat. But if you have a stretch canvas, it has dimension. And if you paint the sides and edges of your, your canvas, you will not need to um, use a frame. It will look very professional and well done if you fully paint those edges. So please do so. I'm gonna go back, clean that paintbrush one more time. Blend it, blend it, blend it. Clean up these little lines here the way I might like them to be. Soften it, soften it, make it more rounded. This is so much fun. Can you see that? Now we're getting a gorgeous, swirly, bluey, full moon sky. Taking just a touch more of that light blue here. Bring a few more slightly visible streaks through here. Blend it, blend it, blend it. Around. And again over here, I'm not even cleaning my paintbrush right here. I wanna add a light blue streak, which I will of course blend. And if you need to go back, blending can be done with the opposite color that you're working with too. It doesn't have to be done with a clean damp paintbrush though it does help when you know that you have your colors the way you want them, you can smooth them. But if you need to add some of the opposite color, please do so, so you get the balance that you're looking for. 
sweeping brush strokes, smooth like butter. Okay, so we have a belt like this. Now, technically, you could say, well, this could be a daytime sky, and yes, it could be if you worked with a slightly lighter blue. We are going to go ahead and do some other blending in just a moment. We're going to deepen this up a little bit, make it into a shade by adding some black to it to make it look like a night sky the closer you get out to the corners of the canvas over here. We don't want to overdo that per se because I do want there to be a contrast when we hit the land. So um, that would actually be a silhouette painted with the black paint, but we still need the sky to look like it's night. So I'm going to show you how we create that. It's a very interesting little technique for doing this just to get the balance right in the colors. So much fun and relaxing. Remember to breathe. If you start to get nervous, don't worry about it. This is so creative, so expressionistic. Have a little fun. Let yourself go here. Really, really get into this creative process. I'm going to make it look like there's a bit of a Milky Way kind of swirl around the moony. The moon needs a little bit of drama around it, I think. Make it look nice. Dramatic. Go back in just with it. Before I leave this completely, I just want to work a little bit more. I'm just taking a tiny bit of deep blue on the tip of my brush. Wherever I'm seeing pinholing, which will happen if you're working with darker colors sometimes, just kind of going back and smoothing that, making sure that I don't go back later and have to fix things when I have custom color blends like this. It's really good to make sure your pinholes are covered over. Pinholing is where you can still see the waffle weave of the canvas showing through the paint, and sometimes that happens as your darker paints kind of dry out, they pull back slightly from the top surface of the canvas off that gesso, and you can still see a little bit of a white hole showing through your paint, which can be really frustrating later, so please make sure that you do catch all of those little pinholes. catching this right around here because I don't want to leave that too long so I can still do some blending. You can always go back though and add the extra color that you need right here. I'm still painting in that circular fashion. Roundy, roundy, round. It's a nice little trick for a basic level painting. You really get an expressive looking dramatic sky. Just so much fun to paint. And right here I'm leaving a little bright spot, as you can see, a few little bright pinholes because I want to come in with some light blue and just kind of catch that right there. I know it looks drastic now, but of course, what do we do, my lovelies? We blend, 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 blending, 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 sing to your canvas, blending, 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 la 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 la, there we go. All right. A little bit more deep blue just for the fun of it. Make it really textural and beautiful in there. Okay. I feel like that's looking, I have to step back from my angle to see, yeah, I want to pop this curve a little bit more. Get those curves on there. Make it curvy and beautiful. more like the way I'd like it to look. If you notice, I'm leaving some open spots where that's not so linear or symmetrical. We want that. We want to kind of play with the texture of the swirl. Make it look really unique and beautiful. Okay, so right about out here with the dirty paintbrush, well actually no, take that back. Clean your brush. If you've been working with light blue, we're switching to blending the outer segment of the sky, so we do need to clean. Just gently squeeze out the water on your rag and reshape your brush. And we're going to go back and take some black into the corners. And we'll be doing a reverse blend here. 
we'll be using some black around here just a touch about here at the horizon area I want to leave mostly blue because we do need to see the landscape that we're creating but I am going to slice in a few places black in that kind of curved fashion and then go back and blend in with some blue dark blue of course the deeper blue This is just dirty brush in the blend here with the black and blue and you can see how that deepens that into a really good night sky really really beautiful again leave it kind of streaky and playful have some fun with that I'm really roughly working that with heavy pressure working this blend here at those streaks because I want them smoothed out to a really dark indigo like so see how great that looks I'll bring that a little closer for you to really see that oh isn't that spectacular I know you can do this I know you can it's not difficult to do just be patient with yourself and with your brush strokes now up here I need to come back here before that sets completely acrylic dries really fast so I'm using a lot of blue right now just to make sure I get that covered over in case it has set slightly and just to kind of fade out that streak a little bit work it back work it back work it back a few more black streaks in here it's really thick paint right now because I really want that to cover well All right, we're already halfway through the class, but this is major progress. Remember, quick class, taking you through quickly, and you'll still have something fabulous at the end. Okay, I am going to take a little bit more deep blue here because I'm not 100% sure where I'm going to put those mountain peaks. So I want to be sure that in case I wanted to make a kind of a different shape to it or I didn't like where that was landing, I want to be sure that I have no pinholes here. I want to fill that in with blue nicely so that it gives a really clean break between the colors. Just enough of that left in my palette to do that. Really, really work that in. Work it, work it, work it. All right, we got it. I love this. Painting makes me so happy. I have loved painting since I was a little girl. And that's when I started. I started training with a professional artist when I was 11. I began my journey as a painter and I have been painting ever since. All right. Get it to about here, that's a good place. Clean your brushes. I would like to invite you again to subscribe to my classes if you feel like you can. You'll get unlimited access to all of my video content for a monthly fee, which is very reasonable. I have a great channel for that. You can um, take classes, some of which last over two hours. They are feature length classes, so I, I really hope you will consider doing that if you're liking what you're doing here get into some really great in-depth projects. Um, you could also rent these classes for 72 hours. That still gives you a little flexibility if the, um, if the subscription isn't in your budget at the moment, though I would really appreciate your subscriptions um, because you will directly be supporting a self-employed artisan and will help me continue being able to offer great classes in the future. So please consider subscribing with me. As you can see here, I'm going in with a, just a watered down light blue on the tip of that big filbert, just streaking it in in a few places where I saw some pinholes and it works really well. 
So again, subscribe with me if you can. The information is available here on the website, so take a peek and see if you think you could do that, or do some rentals for the feature length classes. You won't be disappointed. They're beautiful. They're really wonderful, very detailed. I teach you real artistic tricks and tips. This is the real deal, folks. You get a real artistic education in acrylic painting. And I have over a decade of instructing experience and uh, a lot of great artistic wisdom to impart to you from my own experiences learning and developing my artistic techniques over the years. And you can see I'm bringing a few more streaks out into the deeper area. Again, just very gently with watered down light blue. I would love for you to also visit my social media. I have Facebook and Instagram. Facebook is at laystudio.class. Please share your work there. I can uh, put your artwork into my student artwork album. And I'm also on Instagram at lay underscore studio dot class, hashtag lay studio class, hashtag lay studio classes, hashtag lay studio art classes, and you will be able to continue building the online gallery of student works by doing so and also sharing your beautiful pieces with me. I can't wait to see what you've created. I love it. I love seeing my students' work. It's not only fun to look at, but it also inspires me. I, I, I enjoy seeing the learning process and the creativity of all of my students. So please keep in touch with me. I would love to see your work and hear from you. Now we're moving on. This is given a moment while I was working on those little details up here. So you can see little tiny light blue streaks up here in a few places. I am now going to go ahead and begin painting on the silhouettes of the mountain. Hydrate, having a sip of water, pardon me. So now I'm going to switch to the smaller filbert brush just to give it a little bit more control. And I'm going to pick up black on the tip of my paintbrush and begin sketching the line of the mountains and where I want them to go. and covering over any pinholes that might be left behind, so I have to plan that in. Please do so, plan that into the shape of the mountain line that you're painting. So you don't have any pinholes left behind. Nice big, jagged, dramatic mountain peak here. Bring it over like so. I'm gonna bring that up a little bit higher. Okay, so then I wanna use, I'm still using the same brush, I'll pretty much fill in with this, but I also wanna make a break right here I'm going to curve the line like so. And we're going to paint a lake at the bottom. But right now I need to fill this in. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in. Just quick, good, even, solid brush strokes. Use a lot of paint to cover because, again, we don't want any pinholing as this dries. So good, thick application of paint right here. We'll get that gorgeous silhouette line in place. Easy peasy, really fast. Pinholes, cover them over. Nice thick paint. It's okay if you leave a little bit of raised texture on the mountains and give it a little interesting look visually speaking. You can play around with that and sometimes in your paintings. Okay. Catching my little edge too because that even, even though it's tiny, it's still visible. Okay, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint the water down below, mimicking some of the highlighting of the sky. So we're going to go ahead and take the um, medium-sized filbert again, and we're going to use the deep blue right along this line here, and I'm going to fill that in. If it blends together, that's awesome. We want that because then it gives it that natural look right as the water hits, which is what we want right here, right up against the line, and back kind of a natural flow to that. And I'll kind of fill that in a bit. 
streaky okay if there are a few black marks in the blue paint again as I say that looks really cool it makes it look natural so I'm gonna get this a good coat of deep blue all the way to the bottom of the canvas just fill that water in we don't want to mess around with this too much because we are running low on time and it's a quick class so we just do some quick tricks and techniques to make this look incredible so I'm going to go ahead on the tip of a dirty brush and streak black into the water from side to side with the tip of the brush holding it up on its long angle like so a few black streaks on the water on the outer edges of the water like so Then, I'm going to begin making the highlight in the water. Once I have done that, I'm picking up light blue on the tip of the same filbert brush. And I'm streaking light blue. It's a drastic contrast, believe me, that's a drastic difference in color. So just a bit, okay? Right through the middle area to here and then I'll be using some white again with a dirty paintbrush because I'm not worried about it being meticulously perfect at this point and I'm going through the middle section of the water and I'm adding streaks of white into that center area where it would be picking up the reflection of the moon and I will bring this a little closer to you because I feel like the lip of my easel is covering that slightly and I'm just going to show you how I'm doing this a little bit closer little bit more for good measure and then I can always break that up same brush same little filbert brush with the deep blue one more time I can come in here with some deep blue and in a few places add a couple of extra blended streaks in here on the sides of this so it's not completely drastic and it looks a little more blended gets this gorgeous glowing looking water very easy steps I know I'm painting quickly you can always pause to catch up if you need to don't feel like you have to paint at the same pace I am if you're a beginner and you don't have the confidence with it yet take your time pause and come back anytime you feel you need to during this process it's totally fine this is your project do what you need to do Few more white streaks just for emphasis and then I'll go back one more time with the deep blue this is the fun part you get to go really go back and forth a lot and play with it it's a really fun project really great process and it's just every time you go back and work on the little breaks in the water it just makes it look even more like an actual rippled water and that it has the characteristics I'm going back with really gentle pressure and a little bit more white on my brush our last major step will be the stars with a little round brush make a few little flecks on the top of the water very gentle pressure, just bouncing the paintbrush along. Okay. You know what we can do for the fun of it? <laughs> just because it'll look really cute. I want to take a little tiny bit of watered down black and I'm going to add a little touch of white of it in it to make a tiny little bit of gray right here. Just a little tiny bit of gray. What I'm going to do to make the moon look a little bit more natural, I'm just going to go in and put a few craters on the moon. And I'm just very gently tapping my paintbrush on here. And then I can go back with white. Like 
like so, kind of blend those out a little bit. Pick up a little bit more gray where I want it and just kind of play around with the surface of the moon a little bit. And then the last step are going to be the stars. Layering up that white slightly, a few places. There we go. We have a moon, a beautiful full moon. Now I'm going to take that little round brush and with the tip of my brush get a little bit of loosened up white with the tip of the brush, don't make it too runny because it will be difficult to control. And I'm going to go back and paint little stars. Just with the tip of the brush. Have a little fun with this part. All over. All different places. You can do tiny little tiny ones with barely touching the canvas. Slightly moderate ones by just adding a little bit more pressure. Put them all around. Take your time with this. I'm doing this fast so I can get through the lesson within my time slot here. But you take your time, do what you need to do. You can always pause at this point or just stop and have some fun. Take your time here. Um, this is a really, really fun project. You can, as I say, vary your pressure. Don't go too heavy. Medium pressure is okay. And excellent will be the extra gentle pressure where you just get the teeniest, tiniest little dots of white. You can put them wherever you want. it. I hope you enjoy this as much as I do and that you had fun creating this wonderful dramatic painting. Please share your work with me on social media. I would love to see your work and see what you created during this class and any of the other classes you do. Take it if you're able to subscribe or rent from my video library. I would love to see what you create. Stay in touch with me. I'm going to, for a final step, I'm going to, for, in the bottom right hand corner, use light blue and put my initials. So you can do this with the light blue plate paint and a small paintbrush, or if you're feeling like you need to, you could use a Sharpie. Um, but I recommend using the light blue because I think it will really show up without being overpowering. But just with the tip of your little round brush, put it put this up on its edge, being careful not to put my finger in any stars, and just do my little initials down here. Make sure I get a tip on that. It works. Voila. All right, there we go. Ta-da! Your completed painting to take a peek at, okay? Well, my created pa <laughs> completed painting. I'm sure yours will look fabulous, and as I say, I cannot wait to see it on social media. Please share it with me. I'd love to see your work. Keep in touch with me. Show me your progress. Take a selfie with it, and let me see what you came up with. Thank you so much for joining me today, and as always, I look forward to painting with you next time.